Last week on the Epic Family Road Trip, we embarked on the second leg of our journey living on the road and headed south to Florida with our new motorhome. When we got back to Canada after an epic trip, we began preparing our Jeep and RV for driving around North America. Before hitting the road, however, we had the privilege of joining a group of friends on a trip to bring solar lights to the remote village of Ferrier in Haiti. Little did we know that after returning from our time in Haiti, our perspectives on life would be changed forever. Ferrier, Haiti is one of the poorest areas in the Western Hemisphere, and they do not have access to an electrical grid. They live, work, and study at night beneath the light of kerosene lamps, which are expensive and toxic, causing respiratory-related illnesses. We joined a group of friends, the good people at Mr. Electric, and the team at New Vision Renewable Energy to bring 800 solar lights to the families of Ferrier. Once we arrived in Haiti, it was quite a culture shock. We took a bus ride through the busy city of Cap Haitian all the way out to the remote village of Ferrier. Our headquarters for the week would be a small gated area with several buildings and schoolhouses. What do you think, buddy? Different? Awesome. Different. Yeah. Yeah. See some kids already? Mm -hmm. right we stayed in a building at the top of the hill which had a row of bunks and cots as well as a kitchen and some filtered water for drinking. The plan was to outfit each family with a solar panel, a lithium battery, and a small light fixture with three strips of LED lights. Every morning, we would go up on the roof and plug the batteries into portable solar panels to charge them before the day's classes began. About 800 families completed 65 hours of community service per family in order to be eligible for a solar light. Our job was to teach the family members how to use and maintain their solar lights. Because of the language barrier, we had translators to help us communicate with the villagers who speak mostly Creole. Each day, we would teach about a hundred families how to use the lights. What a rewarding experience to see people learning something new and to see the wonder in their eyes as they switch on a light for the first time. 
autant de fois, on prend une lumière, ça veut dire que mettre une lumière, et à chaque fois que vous une lumière, ça fait que vous avez duré plus de temps que vous avez dit chaque vie. C'est même dans le On her head, there you go. Ah, she must have a strong neck. This thing weighs more than you do. Yeah, says like, you want me to put it on my neck? I guess. <laughs> We spent time with the kids playing soccer and games and dancing and singing in the street until the sun went down. Since the nights in Haiti were so hot, a few of us slept on mattresses out on the roof under mosquito net tents and innumerable stars. Right now in the blazing heat we are training the people how to assemble and use and do some basic maintenance on their new lights. We're not going to let them take the lights home yet. They are going to do the class and then return the lights and then on Sunday night they're going to be given their light after a bit of a, a ceremony that they're going to do in the courtyard here. We saw a spider crawling in the night. <laughs> and they don't like the light. All my life. I've had a light. And tomorrow night, you will find me. We are sorry. It has taken a long time. But the future is better. Without black smoke. But I'm talking especially, I mean, in the name of everyone who is present right now. We give a big thanks to everyone here as you guys. We need, we understand, I mean, the effort that you made to come here. And like every day, we say thank you to you guys. Because you never, I mean, stop assisting us. We also say thank you once again because you understand, I mean, the problem for of those which is unfortunate on this community. We understand the volunteer that you have guys to support us. We put our voices together and say thank you. 
We cannot give you diamond and gold. We ask our Father in heaven to bless you all. The fair community, I mean, understand your work here and also saying thank you so very much. Once again, we put our voices together and say thank you and may God keep continuing. impactful things about this trip for us was that despite the language barrier, we were able to make such strong connections with the people of Ferrier. The fact that they were so joyful and thankful despite their poverty and upheld the things that matter most to them like family and friends over material things made us reflect on what abundance we have and how we can so easily take it for granted. were trained, we gathered everyone together in the courtyard to hand out the lights. A huge double rainbow appeared in the sky above us. And as the sun went down, we watched as the villagers carried their new lights to their homes, and the streets of Ferrier lit up for the first time in history. So now that everybody has a light in the village, there's going to be an ongoing need for repairs and maintenance, uh, for parts to be shipped in, and we're leaving. So the electricians who came along spent the last four days uh, teaching these gentlemen how to repair uh, lights, and they would break apart a battery and teach them how to put it back together again, break the light as badly as possible and teach them how to put the light back together. So they really got versed in how to repair these lights because if someone has a problem in the village here, there's nowhere they can turn to. They can't just go down to a local Best Buy or a Radio Shack or Circuit City or something. So these young gentlemen are gonna start a business supplying lights and repairing lights. So uh, Rustin, the coordinator, asked me to just give them some pointers and tips, just some basic business advice. So hopefully within a year or so, these gentlemen have a thriving business so that this project can be sustained well into the future. Some money safe to buy more material. Now we're waiting for the bus to arrive and it can't be late because uh, we need to get on that plane and get home. I've got a speaking engagement tomorrow in Niagara Falls and we've got a long way to go from Haiti to Miami, to Toronto, to Niagara, hoping it'll get here very shortly so we can 
get and catch the one only flight out of Cap Haitian. The bus showed up, it's here. Barely made it, but we're leaving for Miami. This experience was one of the catalysts for change in our lives, prompting us to live a simpler life less bound by material things. In the end, we all agreed that the impact the people of Haiti had on us was even greater than the experience we had hoped to create for them. This reaffirmed our belief that every time you try to create a remarkable experience for someone else, it comes back to you in greater measure. Stay tuned for episode 4 of this series of the Epic Family Road Trip, where we embark on a year-long trip around North America.